early half of the 20th century saw a rapid rise in labor union membership. But today, only about one-eighth of American workers belong to them. What happened to the American Union? Labor unions began as a way for the common worker to achieve collective bargaining power against employers for higher wages, safer conditions, and better hours. Some unions, such as the Industrial Workers of the World, were focused not only on those goals, but also in creating a united working class. Others, known as bread and butter unions, were solely focused on achieving better conditions. Picket lines around 100 plants. A union's collective power was often enforced in the form of a strike, a practice still common today among public school teachers and transportation workers. Workers would band together and agree not to work until employers gave in to their demands. In the early days, these strikes could turn into violent riots. Today, most unions settle conditions directly with the companies. Through striking and negotiating, unions were able to achieve many victories for its workers. Today, sectors like public education and auto industries are heavily unionized, but many other private sector jobs no longer have a large union influence. One possible reason is government action. Certain labor laws have made unions seem less necessary. For instance, with passage of the Occupational Safety and Health Act, workers no longer needed to depend on unions to report unsafe conditions. Meanwhile, other laws have limited what unions can do. The Taft-Hartley Act of 1947 placed restrictions on certain union bargaining tactics, like striking. Many companies also offer benefits that were once traditionally brought about by unions, such as pension. The decline of unions may also be tied to larger changes in the global economy. Some industries have seen jobs move overseas or be replaced by automation. And with that came the loss of many unionized jobs. Attitudes towards unions may have also contributed to their decline. Many people began to think that unions were economically inefficient and that they hindered growth. And unionized labor that requires higher pay pushed companies to find work elsewhere to stay competitive. But that doesn't mean unions are no longer influential. Organized labor recently helped raise the stagnant minimum wage in several cities. Whether unions will disappear or make a comeback, their influence on the American workforce will carry on for years to come.